How do we find the inverse of a function? Well, in this video, I will give you guys four examples. Check this out. For the first one, the function is 1 over x minus 12. So, step one is, you are going to write the f of x as the y, and then we'll just have y is equal to 1 over x minus 12. Now, step two, we are going to swap x and y. So you see, when you have y right here, it becomes x. And when we have x right here, it becomes y. So we have x is equal to 1 over y minus 12. And step 3, this is the step that takes the most amount of time. We will have to just solve for this new y. Here we have a rational function, right? So let's go ahead and multiply the denominators on both sides. So I'm just going to put this down right here for you guys. Let's multiply by y minus 12 here and likewise do it here because this way, this and that cancel out. And then on the left hand side, we can just distribute this real quick and we get xy minus 12x and that's equal to 1. And in the end, we just have to isolate this y. Hmm. Let's move this to the other side so we get xy equals 1 plus 12x. And lastly, we can just divide x on both sides. And you have two choices. You can divide everybody by x, like this. I divide this by x, divide this by x, or divide this by x. Or you can just put down the big fraction bar right here and then over x. That's fine too. But I will do it this way, and then cancel this out, and we see the y is isolated. Congratulations, this is exactly the f inverse. So we'll put this down right here. And then we will just get 1 over x. And then you see 12x over x, of course, this and that cancel, so we can just have plus 12, like this, and we are done. Here is the inverse for this function. Now for the second one, of course, we will do the same thing. Change f of x to y, and then we will have 27x to a third power plus 1, and then we will switch the x and y. So the y right here becomes x, and then the x right here becomes the y. And we will have to solve for this new y. To do so, let's minus 1 on both sides. So we get, uh, let's write it down like this, 27y to the third power and then x minus 1. All right, and then I'm going to divide both sides by 27. And this time though, I will divide 27 like this on both sides. You'll see why. Right here, we get y to the third power equals x minus 1 over 27. We still have to solve for this y, and we can just take the cube root on both sides. This and that cancel, which is very nice, and we'll just get the y by itself, and that will give us the inverse. Alright, and now, we have the cube root of the top and also the bottom. This is why I put up the over 27 like this, and like what we did over there. Because the cube root of 27 is just 3, so we will still have the cube root on the top, so let's write that down cube root of x minus 1 but over cube root of 27 which is 3 and right here this is it for the inverse okay for c right here of course do the same thing write f of x as y and then we have this equals negative 2 plus square root of x plus 9 now switch right so this becomes x and then this right here stays the same and then we still have this but the x becomes the y and then we are going to add 9. All right, here is the y. We will have to move this to the other side so we get x plus 2. And let's write this down first right here. So we have the square root of y plus 9 and that will give us x plus 2. Okay, here we have the square root. To get rid of the square root, we will just square both sides. So put the parentheses for the entire right hand side and then square that. This way, this and that cancel and we get y plus 9 equals just this quantity, so x plus 2, and we square that. Okay, and then in the end we can just move the 9 to the other side, and that will give us the y by itself, so that will give us the inverse right here, and this is going to be parentheses x plus 2 squared and then minus 9. Alright, so that's pretty much it, but here's a small detail. I will show you guys the graph of this right here real quick. Well, as you can see, this is going to be a parabola because we have this square, but because of the plus 2, we will have to move the parabola to the left twice. So here we have negative 2, and then we will have to move it down 9 times, 
So we have it somewhere right here. And as you can see, the graph will look like this. But the problem is that you can see this is not one to one. Remember, in order for a function to have inverse, the function itself has to be one to one, and likewise, the inverse should also be one to one. One to one means that it passes the horizontal line test, right? Hmm. So, what do we do? The truth is, if you only have the square root, it's only like this, it's only one piece. And when you do the reflection, you also get just one piece. And the piece that we're actually getting is actually just the right hand side here. Like that. So we'll just kind of make the cut. So this right here, we will have to indicate that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 2. All right? So because again, this right here looks like this, right? And then if you do a reflection, it's the right hand side like that. And that's going to be the that, that's going to be this portion here. So I'm going to box this right here for you guys. With that little restriction. Yeah. Now for this one, first write y as f of x, right? Write f of x as y. Here we go. And then I'm going to just interchange. So here we will have x. But this is x, it becomes y, and then we have this was also x. We will also have to change that to y, just like that. Now, we have a rational equation, right? So we will just multiply this on both sides. y plus 4, y plus 4. This way, we see this and that cancel. And right here, we can just distribute, distribute. So we get xy plus 4x. That's going to be y2. Remember, our goal right here now is to solve for y. Here is y, here is y. So let me just move this to the other side. So I will minus y here, minus y here. This way, this and that cancel, but I will also have to get rid of the 4x by minus the 4x on both sides. So we see the left hand side is xy minus y that's equal to this minus that, 2 minus 4x. On the left hand side, this has y, likewise that, we can factor it out. So we have y times x minus 1, and that will give us 2 minus 4x. In the end, we can just divide this on both sides, so we get y, which is our inverse. So let's write this down right here. That will just be equal to this over that, 2 minus 4x over x minus 1. So, just like that.